Hold on, this is going to be rough, Augustus bellowed as the ship loudly flickered out of warp. The phoenix's walls shuddered and the bow pitched erratically as the craft screamed with wild vibration and everything for Marcus went black. He saw a dark shape, only one at first, then hundreds, large black silhouettes against a yellow sun, not defined enough to say what the shapes belonged to. They were almost bleary like trying to see a picture through a glass of ice water bleary. Maybe if he concentrated. Slap! Marcus was brought back to the present with a sudden jolt. Get up, kid, the old man stated. The red lights were flashing still. The sirens had stopped, most likely due to breaking from the warp exit. What happened? Marcus asked groggily. I'll tell you what happened that damn missile nearly sent us to the afterlife, exclaimed a now disheveled looking Augustus. But let's start with why the hell we're sitting in a half-dead tin can, light years from anywhere, shall we? Now sitting with his back to a bulkhead wall, Marcus responded, other than that scaly bastard giving us to the skits, stealing our ship. Most likely because we refused to grease his palms when we arrived in port, Marcus quipped. Other than that, I decided we needed to get some air. Augustus let out a short, hearty laugh as Marcus rubbed the pain from the back of his head and dried blood from his sandy black hair. Where are we? And how long was I out? He asked, still rummy from his unscheduled map. Those are easy questions. I don't know, and about two hours. Two hours? You left me on the floor to bleed out for two hours. It's not like you are going anywhere. Augustus laughing responded, Okay, what about being lost? Don't we have charge? No, we hit the FTL before the computer could finish triangulating our position. We are completely screwed for navigation. Making matters worse, that last explosion damaged our outer layer of armor and dislodged the FTL motor from its housing. I had to get that thing stable before I could wake you up or else you know we could explode. Point taken. Marcus answered as he arose of unstable feet. At least no one will be falling us. Don't be too certain of that. A look of deadpan frankness overcoming his grandfather's face. The skits wanted us enough to pay Wick no small fee. Their ships can track nearly anything, and the micro-particles left by that blasted missile will lead them straight to us. He stated as if it were inevitable. Then we need to fight them, interjected Marcus. With what we have no missile, mines or torpedoes, hell we don't even have more than a few hundred rounds left for the chain gun. So we need to find a place to hide, a port, planet, even an asteroid, or a shipwreck. He trailed as a faint marker buoy signal pinked across there, the ship's main display screen. Back at the ruined space station, the skit battlecruiser, Sasta, meaning death in high skittish, came to dock. At the bottom of the ship's gangplank, a terrified wick waited. As a trio of dark shadows filled down the metallic walkway, his stomach sank. Good day, Empress Sala. Please excuse the mess. We had an incident earlier today. Clearly, Sala said coldly, her black eyes and that of her subordinates, talk in the burnt dock and damaged spacecraft. Wick had good reason to fear the queen of the skid. She was the last living descendant of the emperor, and to further stake her claim she killed not only her own brother, but husband and nearly half the population of skid. She was a calculated destroyer of worlds, and she had come to his backwater station for only one reason. Where are the terrains you promised? She inquired in a venomous tone. My queen! He started to stutter. They tried to escape and were shot down. Now he was visibly shaking. Whatever do you mean? Her voice was calm, clear and measured. They blasted a hole through the airlock, evaded my capture and caught my station on fire. Wick's nerves began to steady as his tail would surely give him some bit of grace. Very well, Sala stated calmly. Where are the remains of their ship? They generated a warp bubble and took a locked missile with them. Have no fear, my empress. They are surely dead. Sala turned from facing the pathetic lizard. Placing her folded hands behind her back, she gazed over the wreck of the docking base. She took a weighted breath. I'll let you in on a secret. During the Battle of Terror, we lost something. Something very important. You might even say it would be the key to reclaiming our empire, as well as all other sectors in our near space. And Augustus Cassia was the only one that could give it to me. Again, in her cold, calculating tone. Why? Why are you telling me this? Wick said quietly. Sala took a step back. Because you won't tell anyone. And at her final word, one of her chaperones lifted his sidearm and Wick's head exploded outwards. She pointed to the nearest dock worker. You there, 
What did you just see here? Nothing, ma'am. Wick, he... He must have fallen in some freak accident. Good, she said calmly. Looks like you're the new boss. Congratulations. It would certainly be a shame if you had an unexpected accident. Sala turned to the silent pair of shadows. Find me their trail. No mere missile would kill Augustus Cassia.